Today's story was written by the author of this book, which is about a world where humans never evolved to begin with. There will be a link in the pinned comment where you can find this book. Be sure to check it out. Thank you so much. I had a strange experience as a young boy that gave me a lot of anxiety during my childhood. While I grew up, it was my go-to story at camp when we sat around the fire. But in my teenage years, and with the help from my therapist, I came to the conclusion that the story hadn't really happened. I convinced myself that I had constructed the memory based on my earliest nightmares, or perhaps on some story told to me before I was old enough to tell fiction from reality. It was a reasonable way to see it. The fact is that you can't really trust your childhood memories, and given how unbelievable this particular memory was, it would have been absurd to still believe in it as an adult. So I stopped thinking about my story, stopped telling it to my friends, and continued on with my life. At least, that was until last week, when I was visiting my mother. I found something in her attic, and now I feel compelled to tell my story once again. I was seven years old. At the time, I lived with my mother in Stockholm. I didn't have any friends. Not because I was disliked by my peers, but because there weren't any kids my age in the neighborhood. The other kids were either too young or too old for me. Thus, I usually played by myself in the courtyard. I didn't mind it that much. I had a rich imagination and could entertain myself pretty easily. My mother kept an eye on me through the kitchen window, but it was a safe neighborhood, so she didn't have to worry too much. It was impossible to enter the courtyard from the street without a code to the door, and my mother knew the neighbors well enough to trust them. One day, on my way down the staircase, I noticed a blue tricycle in the courtyard. I saw it from the window on the second floor. I hadn't seen it before and thought it would be cool to try it out. However, when I reached the courtyard, I couldn't find it anywhere. I assumed someone must have taken it away, although it would have had to have happened really quickly, because I had run down the staircase as fast as I could. Disappointed, I decided to climb one of the maple trees, and I quickly forgot about the tricycle. The next day, the same thing happened again. I saw the tricycle from the window on the second floor, and when I got to the courtyard, it was gone. I don't remember if it happened a third time before I investigated it, but when I did, I was bewildered to discover that the bicycle could still be seen from the window on the second floor, and only from the window on the second floor. The view from that window was slightly different from the view from the other windows. The tricycle was the biggest difference, But there were other things, too, that stood out. For example, the bushes weren't as neatly trimmed, and there were cracks on the wall of the house facing the courtyard. Like with most things, I kept this mystery for myself. It was my discovery, a window to my own secret world. At least that was how it felt. Every time I went outside to play, I took a few moments staring out the window on my way down. One time, a neighbor found me looking out of it. She asked what I was looking at, unable to notice the small differences that had caught my eye. I guess her adult mind simply couldn't find a reason to pay the view from the second floor any special attention. No one did, except me. I told her that I was looking at the birds, even though I didn't see any birds. In fact, I hadn't seen a single living thing on the other side of this window. It didn't register that that might have been a bad sign. Instead, I thought it made my secret little world peaceful. I loved to be alone, and the world with the blue tricycle seemed to be the perfect place for that. I don't know how many days passed, but at some point, my curiosity got the best of me. It was October or at least sometime during autumn, because I remember the yellow leaves on the maple trees. I snuck out of the apartment before my mother woke up. It was right after dawn. 
I climbed up the window frame and the staircase. A light rain fell over the courtyard, at least over this version of it. The second floor wasn't that high up, but it was still too high up for me to just jump out of without hurting myself. Luckily, the window lay just next to the downpipe of the rain gutter, which I could use to climb down. I was a good climber. My mother always tells me that I learned to climb before I learned to walk, so it didn't scare me. I still have to gather a lot of courage, though. I usually followed the rules to stay out of trouble, and this was perhaps the first time I did something that I knew my mother would have disapproved of. My hand trembled a little when I opened the window. I have a vague memory of the air smelling strange, toxic in some way. Every time I smell burnt rubber, this memory comes back to me. So I guess it smelled a bit like that. It didn't deter me, however. I grabbed the pipe, feeling my little heart beating hard in my chest, and began my descent. The sound of my feet hitting the ground echoed between the buildings. Looking up at them, the dark windows stared down at me like empty eye sockets. Hello? I yelled and listened to my echo. I wanted to know if I was truly alone, and since no one yelled back, I assumed that I was. This place was truly just as empty as I had hoped, but it wasn't as peaceful. The smell made me nauseous, the rain left black dirt on my skin, and the raindrops that landed on my lips left a bitter taste in my mouth. Looking up, I noticed a couple of high-level clouds tainted with a yellow color. I still felt safe, protected from the rest of the city by the buildings that surrounded me but I still didn't want to stay for long. It wasn't just the smell, it was the overall feeling of something being wrong. I walked to the other end of the courtyard. On one of the walls that I hadn't been able to see from the window, I saw some graffiti. Close the frickin' doors. I might be remembering the exact phrase wrong, but I'm sure it said something like that. There was a heap of clothes lying next to a wall. I thought they must have belonged to somebody. There had been people here once, I thought. Where did they all go? This question terrified me. I really wanted to try out the tricycle, but after seeing those clothes, I decided against it. It was time to go home. On my way back, I noticed something shiny hidden under the rotten leaves on the ground. I bent down and picked it up. It was a golden ball, the size of an apple. Fascinated, I stared at it. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. I almost forgot about where I was, but just moments later, a sound of something crashing to the ground came from behind the building, somewhere on the street. I froze with fear. Something, something living, was moving around down the street behind the building. It made a noise that sounded like the cooing of a pigeon, but much deeper. Another crash. It was the gate to my apartment building, the one leading directly to the courtyard through a tunnel. I stood at the wrong side of the tunnel and didn't dare to run past it. The cooing echoed inside the tunnel. Something was slithering its way through it. It sounded like someone was dragging a huge sack on the ground. I hid in the bushes and held my breath. The racing beat of my heart pulsated through my entire body. I was shaking. And when I saw the thing coming out of the tunnel, I wanted to scream. But I kept silent. A huge arm appeared from the opening of the tunnel and grabbed the ground. It pulled its body forward a few meters but not enough for it to come outside. Another arm, its left arm, extended out of the tunnel and pulled the body far enough for it to exit the tunnel. It wasn't really a body though, rather just an enormous gray head with some lonely, long black hairs. It was just as big as a truck and the long arms were attached to where its ears should have been. 
It had two golden orbs as eyes, and its large mouth revealed enormous sharp teeth. It formed an O with its mouth, going coo-coo as it sniffed the air with its long nose. It pointed its face towards me, but didn't seem to see me. I wanted to cry, but forced myself to keep dead silent. Since it didn't have any ears, it probably wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. But in my state of panic, I didn't think of that. It began spitting something in different directions. One of the things landed just next to me. It was a golden ball, just like the one I had found under the leaves. Seeing my reflection on its surface, I realized they were eyes. That was why it had come when I found the first ball, and that was why it had found me now. Coo-coo. Hmm. Coo-coo. It began to crawl towards my hiding spot, licking its lips while cooing excitedly. I had to run. I closed my eyes for a second, and then I bolted for the pipe. As soon as I appeared in front of its large eyes, it began to scream like an infant, but much, much louder. I didn't look back, but I could hear it rapidly dragging itself after me. With shaking hands, I grabbed the pipe and began to climb. The screams from the saggy, grey head heard my ears. When I was just about to climb inside the window, the creature was beneath me. It reached for me with both of its unnaturally long arms. My eyes were burning from the muddy rain that fell into them. I screamed out of pain and terror and blindly pulled myself inside a fraction of a second before the creature would have grabbed me. Somehow, I don't remember how, the window cracked as I fell down on the granite steps of the staircase. There was a loud bang and the crying of the monster outside stopped in an instant. I got up, rubbed the rain out of my eyes, and looked outside. The blue tricycle was gone, and so was the slithering beast. My own world had returned outside the window, possibly because it broke. I got into trouble for sneaking out and for breaking the window. I'm not sure if I ever told my mother the story at the time, but if I did, she most likely took it as a way for me to escape my responsibilities. As I said, over time, I stopped believing the story. I blamed my wildly imaginative mind. After all, it was the most reasonable explanation. But last week, I visited my mother to go through my old stuff before she gifted it away to charity. And that was when I found it. There was something heavy in one of my old toy boxes. I swallowed nervously. A drip of sweat ran down the side of my head, and I opened the box with trembling hands. It was the golden ball that I had found that day. As I saw my reflection on its shiny surface, it instantly felt as if someone, or something, was watching me from far, far away. Or maybe just from the other side of a window. <laughs>